boy do I have the charts of all charts for you today. When I found this out in my early 20s, remember the first time I saw this, totally opened my eyes. I felt like I figured life out, seriously. And so I was explaining this to my friend the other day and he's you know into these ideas, spirituality, manifestation, self-development, becoming the best version of you. He had never seen this chart. What? You never saw the chart? So it got me thinking, oh, I bet there's some people on YouTube who haven't seen the chart as well. So let's talk about the chart. Drinking game, take a shot every time I say chart. This chart's going to explain why you do the things you do down to every little life decision. You're basing it on one of these five tiers. At the end, I'm gonna draw another chart for you at home that I think you'll be familiar with. This is gonna connect a lot of those neurons in your brain they are gonna fire and wire together. Here we go, quick plug. We have very limited space in our metamorphic coaching program. So if you've ever wanted to join now is like the best time. We're raising the price to another 500 bucks pretty soon. So it's pretty much like you save 500. Uh, scroll down, apply for our coaching program, speak with someone to see if it's even a good fit for you. Cause we don't know. Um, they're gonna know your situation, all the ins and outs way more. And uh, we'll see if we can help you. Don't read this, don't cheat yet. In 1943, there was this positive psychologist who's a Russian named Abraham Maslow. He's one of the granddaddies of positive psychology, which is pretty much saying, hey, up until this point, we're really good at making sure people don't become miserable and like keep going down so we can get people from like negative 10, they hate their life, they're depressed, nothing matters. We can bring them up to like a zero, right? And kind of hope, you know, there they go. Hope, hope everything works out. But what we haven't gotten good at is taking people from a zero, getting them to five, six, seven, ten, and beyond. So that's where positive psychology comes in. It's a lot of what we talk about. It's essentially what self-development is, or what it was supposed to be, kind of in the 80s boom and the 90s boom. And one of the pioneers of this was Abraham Maslow. He was 35 when he came up with this chart right here called Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs. Now this is where he was trying to figure out what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life without a spiritual explanation? So more of a secular explanation. He distilled it down into five needs that you are on a spectrum of any given time on one of these five needs. And just like any other good theory, it has a pyramid to go with it. The very first need, we're going to breeze through these and then I'm going to tie them back to you. And at the end, I can't wait to bring this all together. Very first need is that of survival. Your survival needs. Oxygen, water, food, safety. These are pretty freaking important, aren't they? And biologically, this makes sense that these are the base of the triangle, the most important, because it doesn't really matter, these higher ones that we're talking about here, which are gonna be super relevant to where you're at. These don't matter if we're running away from a tiger and you know, there's so much danger, or we don't have any water or food and you know, we don't even know how we're gonna feed ourselves. Met, you move up into safety needs. These aren't like red alert emergency, but these are things like property, employment, family, security, a bit more long-term. This is like, how am I gonna survive today, tonight? And this is like, how am I gonna, how are we gonna survive this week, this month? Before we keep going, it is important to note two things here. Maslow would call these the need of the body, maybe? I, I might be messing that one up. And these are the needs of the spirit, okay? So these are like, I guess the 1.0 you is what we would call it. These are the needs of the 2.0, that highest version, that next iteration of you. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're like, this is the second thing I want to tell you. You're like, Clark, well, okay, let me just get rid of these and I'll just focus on these, give me those, and then I have the meaning of life figured out. What Maslow took his whole life to do, I can just do in two months. Not so fast. See, no matter what stage we're at, we all have these five needs. Even me right now, <laughs> even me, the most enlightened guru on YouTube. You know what I mean though? Like we all have these needs. They don't go away. That's why they're a need. Just because you're enlightened, you still gotta eat. You still gotta drink water. So the goal here isn't to just like transcend these and get rid of these. And now I don't ever have to think about employment and I'm just gonna quit my job and meditate all day in a cave because that's what's important. No, you gotta be grounded. Once you check the box, check the second box, you're ready to move up to the next tier, which is love and belonging. Family, friendship, and intimacy. One thing I wanna point out to you that's very fascinating. What are the biggest companies in the world? Okay, like public ones that you would know about. 
Where are they on this pyramid? We haven't even gone over these, but they've revealed themselves, haven't they? They're things like fast food, food distribution, food, right? Shelter, real estate, wealth, building, communications. You could even argue technologies like you're watching me on right now on the internet. That could be us ascending as consciousness into love and belonging, community, connecting each other. I was watching an interview with Mark Zuckerberg, a fascinating guy. Um, I'm not here to put anyone down. I'm not here to judge anyone. I'm not going to go into conspiracies. Say what you will. You know, we all have our, our quirks about us. But I was watching his interview he was doing with, I think it was Gary Vaynerchuk, uh, about the metaverse. And he was saying that when Facebook, he kept saying what Facebook's been meant to do all along, which is connect each other. Deepen human connections, I think was his exact word, verbiage. I was like, well, that's pretty good spin on that. And I, and I think maybe that's how it started. And these technologies, which yes, they have their problems and you could take the doom and gloom approach of them of, oh, they're ruining childhoods and they're pulling us apart and they're evil. Or they could just be ascending. You know, they're not like some fast food company, which would be right here. They're not some like big mass produced property company. And again, those aren't evil. Maybe they're right here. And so as we grow and as we ascend as a consciousness, maybe we'll eventually rise up into these last two. What are they? Esteem is the fourth tier. Esteem, self-esteem, self-worth, confidence, individuality. Notice this more like you're in a group, you're in a clique, you're accepted, you're brought in with the tribe, so you're not outside alone, fending for yourself, focusing on these. This is more of like a we approach. Then you get into the I approach, me, individual. Osho, one of my favorite cult leaders, <laughs> uh, I, I used to read a lot of his books in my early 20s. Uh, I'd take them, I'd work on farms, I'd hitchhike all around, me with long hair, sunburned, uh, just a big backpack I would camp in like the national parks and whatnot or, or forest. Uh, I think there's only one in Hawaii. I'd just be flipping through some Osho, kicking back, living the hippie life. I'll never forget some of the things that, that he talked about because again, that ingrains in it, just like this chart, really sticks with you. One of the things he said is that we go through seven year cycles. You, me, pretty much everyone. From age zero to seven, what are you? You're figuring about how to eat how to breathe, how to drink. That's pretty much all you care about. From age seven to 14, you're starting to branch out a little more. You're getting into safety. You're thinking more long-term. You're getting into your teenage years. From 17 to 21, what are you focused on? Love and belonging, right? Who, who do I fit in with? Am I accepted at uh, the school? Anything like that, right? Do the friends like me? Am I ostracized out? I feel like a loner. Love and belonging. From what are we at, 21 to 28? Now you're getting into esteem. Me as an individual, I wanna leave a mark. What am I gonna contribute? What's my passion? What's my purpose? You hear that, don't you? And then essentially you go through 10 seven-year cycles. The average life expectancy, you know, about 70 years maybe when he was writing that. And so that's kind of what you develop as. And maybe we'll do a video on that in a future time. Let me know if you'd like that. My point. It's interesting how when you pair that up, that seems to be the progression of hierarchy of needs. And when you do that, you eventually get to the last one, which is, drum roll, thank you, self-actualization. And now we're gonna dive deep. If I could boil down my entire purpose or mission, it's helping people become the best versions of themselves. Raise up, tap into that inner potential that you have, I call that the 2.0 you. What it comes down to is actualizing your full potential. Maslow has a saying that what one can be, one must be. What one can be, one must be. That the need of self-actualization, just like water, air, food, shelter, this is a need for you, it's not optional. Eventually you're gonna to come to a point in your life where finding your purpose, figuring it out, that's not optional anymore. It's a need to self-actualize. Otherwise, that's where I think depression, ick, anxiety, those bad feelings come in like, what am I doing? I feel off purpose. I don't feel like myself. And so maybe you're feeling that, and a lot of people tend to feel that later 20s. Maybe they got out of college, they feel it earlier, right? Maybe they're working their job and eventually they hit a wall and they're just like, I can't do this anymore. I need to do something else. I don't know what it is, but I'm meant for more. 
And that's exactly like the kind of people we help in our coaching program, Metamorphic. I mean, we're looking for people to reinvent themselves, to actualize on that full potential. We're not the people you come to if you're looking for these, right? Here's, that's the one thing we do and we do it extremely, extraordinarily well. Literally a six week boot camp. And if you want more info, again, link is in the description below. Check it out, apply. We're happy to see if we can help you and if it's a fit. Cool if I tell you a story. In my early 20s, I was doing a lot of touring in a band, playing sold out shows all around the world. Uh, it was one of my you know, big manifestations was ever since I was a 12 year old kid in middle school trying to play some 41 songs to impress this girl uh, and play the drums, I sat down every single day at the drum kit wanting to play sold out shows around the world. It's all I wanted to do. Eventually did it and it's a crazy lifestyle. Okay, I was living in this small apartment in my early 20s, right? Um, I had a roommate. It was a lot of late nights. It was a lot of jet lag. It was a lot of partying. And uh, I was single at the time. I'd just gotten out of this long-term relationship. And so why am I telling you this? Well, it's interesting because that was the hardest time for me. When I look at like my growth and trajectory as just like a business or creatively or as a person, it was kind of flatlined. Okay. And I'm like, why did those years, why were they so flatlined? When I was looking at this chart, it made me really think and go inward. And I'm like, oh, I was so focused on these needs right here, safety and survival, right? Pretty much going out partying, having fun, hooking up. It's hard to really focus on this stuff up here, self-actualization and esteem needs, when you're focused on survival, kind of hedonism, if you will. I'm not here to judge you if you know we all go through stages. Um, I got some friends who are in the most loving way, complete degenerates when it comes to like just going crazy and you know, I'll see them online and I'm not at that stage of my life anymore. And I think there's something to be said about why people are more creative when they have a lot of these needs met. And you can do this without a relationship too. It's not the only way to do it, but a lot of people share this commonality that I coach. They're like, once I'm in a relationship, Clark, I can check these boxes off, essentially what they're saying, and now I feel like I can focus on myself and I can actualize. It's almost like you have that safety net checked off. It allows you to take more risk. Because if everything's up in the air all the time, 24, 7, 365, it's kind of hard to take a lot of risk. If you have a risk in your relationship and a risk in your personal life and a risk in your business, well, guess what? Each one of those buckets is going to add to the stress and compound and no wonder you can't take any risks big time. So getting a lot of this stuff checked off first actually allows you to be more creative and actualize. When I was researching before this video, there was one need, a sixth tier, that was even beyond becoming the best version of yourself, finding your purpose. You know what that was? It's right here in the halo. Self-transcendence. Doing it for a bigger reason than just yourself. How do I get more subscribers? The wrong question. How do I impact more lives? Get more testimonials, impact people, get more stories, spread the message, self-transcendence. How do I make money a million dollars? Wrong question, nothing wrong with it, but it's operating from here. Self-transcendence, how can I impact the masses on a mass scale and get compensated very well for doing it? Self-transcendence. It's almost more like altruistic. You want to go very spiritual, that when you transcend beyond these needs, which again, you know, you kind of have just surviving, and then you have some tribalism, and then you have individuality, where it's just like, you know, if you just get focused here, it can be narcissism. You're the only thing that matters, right? Right in here. But again, these are, these are better. You get into this, right? You ascend up, which is that all are one and one is all. That there is no good and evil, that it's just... You know, duality almost disappears in the scope of infinity, where it is infinite. There isn't really light and dark, night and day, up, down, east, west. It's just all part of the one. That's a thought exercise. Just go as big and big and big and big and big as you get. Eventually, you'll just come down to the realization that it's all one. Unity. Much larger conversation for a different time. Now, I've been telling you about the chart that I was going to show you at the end. And this thing is the opposite of this. It's not a triangle, it's a cone. And I'll put it up right here, you might recognize it. The Hawkins scale. 
Isn't that cool? As you have self-actualization, what do you have? The higher scales of consciousness. As you have more survival down there, what do you have? Shame, guilt, anger, fear. Those are literally your survival needs or suffering vibrations. Look at this. When you're self-actualizing, if we're using that one-to-one, -one, that's some of the most high vibe activities that you can do. And then when you're just so consumed in getting by and surviving, yeah, you're gonna feel low vibe. See how these go together. And I think this is kind of like a more Western approach to it, which is more like psychology-based, research, positive psychology, right? Uh, this is more of a spiritual explanation, consciousness. And they can go together. If you want a six-week roadmap on how to actually do that, click the link below. Go see if our coaching program is something that you could see yourself getting behind. Love to invite you into the family. I work with every single client. I'm there, you're there, it's a really tight-knit community. It's not like it's just thousands and thousands of people and you're just some nameless person. We really work with you on a personal level. There's a lot of interaction and whatnot with myself and some other coaches as well. Take care of our clients in that way. Um, so I'd love to have you, invite you into the community. Or if you're just looking for a challenge, you feel like things are kind of stagnant, um, work with a lot of people out of a transition of a job, maybe they're getting out of a relationship, and they're trying to reinvent themselves. They're, they're really not trying to, you know, just look for things and other people to make them happy. They're ready to start doing some of that inner work and that introspection. But I mean, a lot of this, I say it all the time, education out there can be entertainment at the end of the day if we're not using it, right? And so that's why we give you the six week roadmap that I designed and um, we go super deep. You even experience some NLP and whatnot. So get in there and rewire that subconscious. That's in the link below. would love to have you there. Thanks so much for being here. Until next time, stop settling, start living. See ya.